Goodness. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay, great. For some reason, my number counts not working on right now. <laughs> okay, so I see some of you all are posting that you made it back, but I'm only seeing like one person in the chat room at this time, so I'm sorry about that. And I still have Diane57 who's saying that I'm still frozen. Thanks, Kaylin, for letting me know that it says 15. For some reason, all I have is the number one reporting. Okay, so I'm just going to do the new people that are in, or we'll just go through it really quick. We've got Erica back, Jennifer, Diane57, Lisa Brooks is here. Hi, Lisa. Kaylin is back. Sheila. Sheila Herb is here. Hello, Sheila. Welcome to the live chat. We got Jennifer, Diane57, Sarah Raglan. Um, so Love is here. Lisa Brooks is here. Says picture is good. Eric Oda say, okay, I'm back. And Susan Glenn's here from Stormy Cincinnati. So we should be getting our rain in the next day or so we got cindy here from wisconsin and mrs j coleman is here welcome if you're interested in knitting that's what um mrs j coleman does so i'm still showing one on my screen but i do see that we have on my ipad 20 people here so i've got uh, mary from brooklyn so yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Just recapping on my previous projects. We're going to hear the notifications bell because I goofed and put it on airplane mode. When you put it on airplane mode, it takes you off the internet. I wasn't thinking. That's what happened before. So you will hear some dings because I am using my phone for recording today. So, Diane is still having issues. Can you hear me, Diane? I'm hoping that she can at least hear. So, she can at least hear the information. Although, I have a lot of stuff to show today. She says she can hear me, but for some reason, the screen is frozen. So, I don't know what that's about. And it appears that you're the only one that have that issue. So today I just wanted to talk about those extra half square triangle pieces that we make. A lot of mine that I collect are from bindings or when I'm doing snowball type quilt blocks. So I tend not to, so uh, Sheila is saying her screen is frozen as well. Try refreshing again. If you're on a keyboard, hit the F5 button. So what I tend to do is when I'm having making half square triangles, I have all of these extra pieces from when I join. Um, not I have uh, when I'm joining my binding. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. Lisa is saying it's still good where she is. So what I don't like to throw anything away that's usable. I don't keep stuff that I don't use. So I do trash some things. Some people think that I don't throw anything away, but I do. But what I do with these is that I tend to sew them to something else. Now, sometimes 
I might have one where I've sewn two pieces of fabric together and I've got the other side left. So I might have a piece of fabric to already go with it. In that case, I'll just go ahead and sew these. And I leave a lot of this kind of stuff next to my sewing machine and I just use it and sew pieces. Uh, when I'm working on other projects, I don't like to break my threads. I think you waste a lot of thread with the breakage and then by the time you start back up, you've got this long tail. Then you've also got to cut the tail off. So what I do is I just go ahead and chain piece something else. I started sewing in 19, started quilting in 1994 and I've been doing it ever since I first started because I used to do it when I was making clothing. So what I'm doing most times with these, especially when they're left over from my binding, is I'll just use my die cutter and I'll just cut a size that's bigger by a half inch than what I need. So I'm actually wanting to make one and a half inch half square triangles that are going to finish at one inch. So I just cut these and have these also laying by the side of my machine so that I have both pieces ready to go at all times. So when I'm sewing these, at the time that I'm working on them, I'm not really doing anything with them. They're just being sewn. So here is one here that I have sewn. At this point, I don't even press it open. I'm just sewing pieces together. Why do I sew these? Because I find that if I'm working on a quilt top and say I want to do a piece border, I find if I already got them sewed together, I'm more than likely willing to piece the border even if I need 400 half square triangles because they're already sewn. All I've got to do is square them up and then press them open. And notice I said square them up and then press them open. So we're going to talk about some various different methods for squaring up. And that's my focus here today. So here is a bag here of just various half square triangles that as I'm sewing them, I just put them into this plastic sheet. Eventually, this is what's on my workstation. Eventually, it gets to be too many in here. And I'm just going to show you a bag of how many that I already have sewn. All of this big bag, which is a two gallon Ziploc bag that's got various different sizes of half square triangles in here. I just mix them in. So I keep them, they're already sewn. So whenever I need them, it's not a big job for me to go ahead and put those into a border or it could be some other projects and I'm going to talk about those as well. So we have all of those half square triangles and like I said, I leave them flat. And I want to talk about some of the square up rulers. So you have your basic square up rulers. This is an OFA one. I meant to go get a piece of white paper and forgot. I have a piece of freezer paper. It's not going to cover everything, but it will help. So I normally will just use any of my square up rulers. And so I'm just showing you this one. Now, a lot of people have 12 inch square up rulers. And I like to have square up rulers in various different sizes because if I'm working, whatever I'm squaring up, I want to have a ruler just slightly bigger than what I'm squaring up. So that way I can see around all of the edges. With that being said, I'm actually working on things where I need stuff squared up to two and a half inches. So right now I'm using a four inch square up ruler. Now, I know a lot of you like to use this ruler, the block lock, and we've talked about this. I actually did a video where I was testing it out, and it's a great ruler for what it does. I just square up my pieces differently. Now, if I'm making a quilt that I need or making a piece border where I want the fabrics, uh, the border pieces to be in particular fabrics, then I go use my triangles on the um my cd my thangles not thangles <laughs> the cd i'm blocking the name of it right now i don't know why i'm blocking the name of this but i have a cd that has all the different sizes of half square triangles that i can print off however many pieces of paper that i need to make the x number of half square triangles that i need if i'm making a lot of them in particular fabrics then i'm going to go that route 
and I'm going to actually be squaring up as I trim out my paper piecing units. But if I'm using from scraps, then I'm trying to use stuff, then that's where you need to come in and start using some form of a scrub ruler. And I, like I said, I know a lot of you like the block lock square up ruler because it has the grid in here that will hook into your half square triangle. Now, if you did not press your half square triangle to the dark, this ruler will not work. And a lot of times that I'm working with half square triangles, I'm actually pressing my half square triangles open and i'm going to talk about that in a little later i just want to get through some of the tools here that i have i got a couple more the next one that i have i'm just putting the paper up under the name is the half square and quarter square triangles by june taylor i don't know if any of you have seen this ruler in joann's it actually has slots and what I like about it is that it does give you the option here of doing the quarter square. And you know that your intersections are matching because it's on the ruler. And then you just go up the particular slots. Let me show you some of the slots. So whatever you're squaring up, you go into that particular slot to square it up. You rotate. When you cut, you're cutting on two sides of your half square triangle or your quarter square triangle. Then you rotate one quarter turn and go up line it up and then go back up two slots again i really like this ruler for that for me it works best when your seams are pressed open because if you got one pressed to the other side or to the dark side then you've got a little lump in it it's not that it won't work but it's just you're going to have a little rocking with it the ruler that i actually use to square up my half square triangles or is the quilt in the day and this is when i square up scrappy half square triangles why do i use this ruler if any of you don't know what this ruler is you can actually square up half square triangles while they're flat so let me find one i just put everything up so here i have a half square whoops I'm losing my half square triangles. <laughs> so I have a half square triangle here, and then you see the stitching line. And whatever size you want to square this up to, like I want a one and a half inch half square triangle. So I put the one and a half inch line on my stitch line. And I'm not going to be able to do this and show it properly, but I'll get as close as I can. And then what happens is I'm squaring this up while it's flat. So I trim on both of those sides and then I'm done trimming. You will have dog ears. So when I have, let me trim this up so now I can show you one trimmed. And you're not going to be able to see anything on my desk because only my laptop would allow me to do that. But I'm basically just trimming those two sides that I told you. Because I want to show you a half square triangle that's been trimmed. So now I have it here. And when I press this open, you can see that I'm going to have the dog ears there. What I do is while it's still flat on my work table, do you see where the stitch ends? I take my rotary cutter and just go straight from where the stitch ends up to the top. And I do that on both sides. And that's how I get rid of my dog ears while everything is still flat. So now this is what I have. And now when I press those seams open, I do not have the dog ears there. So let me put this back in the bag. I want to lose my hard work. <laughs> Okay, so that's one of the reasons that I like this ruler. I don't know how many sizes she has where this ruler comes in. I have two of them. I have one for that goes up to six and a half half square triangles. And then there's another one that is bigger. It's right here. And you can square up to nine and a half. So there's times when I was making larger half square triangle units that I needed to have it in a, another size. So I opted to do that. So, 
one thing, the reason why I'm doing this video is because in the last week, I had a friend that I was gifted some half square triangles and they're in bigger sizes than I normally have because all of mine will normally square up to like one and three quarters to one and a half if I'm using my binding pieces. Now sometimes if I'm snowballing a quilt, a sampler quilt or something, then I have bigger pieces. So I do have some bigger pieces but not a whole lot of them anymore because I've used them. So I got this big container here with this bag and I've already taken some out. All half square triangles. And I just want to talk about some of them. On some of them, you can see where there's a difference in light and dark values. And on this side, on this size of a half square triangle, you can see pretty good what the light and dark is. But sometimes when you get to fabrics like this and you start squaring this down to one and a half inches, then sometimes you might lose your light and dark value. So be careful of that. Also in here, I had a lot of half square triangles where to me, it was mediums or medium dark fabrics that weren't really like a light in the dark. So I'm not going to really use these, especially if for what I'm using them for right now is that I'm actually cutting stuff down. So what is the dark on this? I mean, light and dark on this because it's all dark to me. So some of them were like that. It's not to say that I can't use them. Maybe when I'm doing a crumb quilt or just piecing a board randomly that's all mediums and darks, I can use those. So I've just been kind of separating stuff out of here. And I actually made a project out of here that I will show you. So I noticed that the comment section has been rolling, so I'm going to roll back and see what some of the comments are. I think I had somebody out of... Brooklyn. So we had Mary last. So we got Diane. She's saying it must be YouTube and she can she she's back. Um and Linda knows the same thingles. No, I'm actually talking about the triangles, the C D triangulations is what it's called. That's what it's called. Triangulations. That's what I use. I actually stopped buying thangles and triangles on a roll because I had to store them. And if I'm storing them, then I felt like that was just taking up more room. And then every time I needed a half square triangle of a particular size, I had to go out and buy another roll. So that's why I quit buying those two products. Not that they're not great products. I just prefer not to have anything laying around when I've got other stuff I'm trying to store and don't have room for. We got um, Sharon's here. Hi, Sharon. She's from Michigan. And she says, Donna's saying she's going to have to find that ruler. And she's, uh, Diane is saying it also has where you mark your lines. Uh, since I'm not doing using it that way, because, so I don't really use those lines on the ruler because I'm already got my pieces cut in a, half square triangle shape sort of they don't have to be perfect because the ruler is actually going to make it perfect for me eric says is that square ruler better than just using regular square rulers to me i love using it because i only have to trim two uh two sides and then if you're rotating after you've done your two sides on a regular square ruler you got to rotate 90 degrees and go back on the other two sides so I like doing it flat because I'm only having to trim two sides. So that's why I do it flat. It's more, I think it would be more of a personal preference, but that's what I like. So you can, I would recommend trying it because the ruler isn't very expensive, I think. Uh, Donna says, missed a lot of the June Taylor ruler and sharing is saying this isn't showing for her either only sound something must be going on but it's working fine for me and the other people on the chat but we've got about two or three people that are having difficulty viewing today so i'm thinking it must be youtube eva says hi t 
a little late just got home from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I hope you had fun there. <laughs> I see people are still popping up that they are having fun. They're fine with the viewing. Got Janice from Texas. Hi, Janice. Welcome to the live chat. Got Cindy here. She says, great tip to trimming dog ears. You're welcome, Cindy. And... Ethel was saying, what's the name of that ruler again? I'm assuming the last ruler is the quilt in a day. Let me put it back on something white so you can see it. But it's the quilt in a day, six and a half inch triangle square up ruler. And then I have one that's a nine and a half as well. So this is the ruler here. And like I said, you can square up. If I'm squaring up three inches, then I'd want to take rotate my ruler and put the three inch line on my stitch line. If I'm squaring up to one and a half, then I'm going to put the one and a half on my stitch line. I'm going to have a mess on the back side of my board because I cut. Um, so I'm still trying to get through some of the comments. Sharon says... Sharon, I had that but restarted tablet and it was fixed. So I think people are trying to help those that are having difficulty viewing. So thank you very much. We got Terry here. Hi, Terry. Welcome to the live viewing. And we've got Patty here. Hi, Patty. She says, hi, T. 80 degrees in California today. Patty, we had like 88 here in St. Louis, I think, today. It was hot. And Joan Elkins is reminding everybody to thumbs up the video. I'll give it a thumbs up on my tablet. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. We got Debbie from Columbia, South Carolina. And then Debbie says, I have sound and a picture. All righty. So now we're going to go to, once you have all of these half square triangles, what are you going to do with them? Again, you can always use them in borders i'm doing a couple of things with them i did make a project for you here today but i want to first show you some things that you can do with them just by themselves so if you've got your half square triangles you can easily make little pinwheel blocks Got to turn it right. <laughs> and I'm looking at it backwards, so. What I do is I tend to put it the way the last one was put and then turn it one quarter turn. Okay. So these are all in the container that I just received from this lady. And so you can easily make pinwheel blocks. This would be really pretty as one inch half square triangles into a pinwheel block that finishes at two inches square. I mean, all of this is just left over from your binding pieces, but wouldn't that make an awesome miniature quilt? And even I've seen some full size bed quilts made with just one inch finished half square triangles. They're just beautiful. And again, just be careful of your values when the smaller they get, the harder they are to read the value. So you can also make another block. I'm just going to rearrange these half square triangles down on my work desk. And I'm going to actually switch one out. Maybe I'll switch them all out. Because I want to make sure I have some good contrast for you. You could also just turn either all of your darks or all of your lights into a center so that way you will have more of a square and a square but it's a p square and a square and then if i turn that all around where i had all of my lights in the middle say you want to emphasize that more maybe you might want to do some 
embroidery or some stitching in there, some red work, then that would be a good place for you to do some of that. What you could also do is do a block called the broken dishes where you have two lights in and then two darks are in. So you could also do something like that. One thing that I have done with half square triangles is that I've just made rows of them. And I'm just trying to pull some off my desk here where they're just going in a row. And I can make this row as long as I like. If I got a lot of these, I just keep going. So I'm only going to show you just two rows. But if I have two rows, if I have four of them going across, most likely I want to have four of them going down as well. The reason being is because if you do the same number across and down, you're going to end up with a square. And then you can put those together by rotating one quarter of a turn and you'll end up with a different pattern. So let me show you that one. And again, we on, I'm on my phone and my phone camera does up close viewing. So this is the same thing where all of the rows are the same going across. And then I just rotated one quarter of a turn. And you can see that in the center where all of it is white. So again, it's hard to show things in my room here. So we'll have to do the best we can. They say it's 90 degrees in Texas. Got Linda Jenkins here from Wisconsin. Welcome, Linda. And Patty says she loves that. And Diane says that's beautiful. But this is all leftover pieces from the bindings. And this time I squared everything up to so that I'd have one and three quarters. So my actual squares are one and a quarter finished. So then I did, I talked about this one on a video that I did. I was doing the quilting on it. And it's just one inch. I think these finish at three quarters of an inch. And I just was making something. I gave my scrap club a challenge to use. I think it was 36 half square triangles. And this is what I came up with. So... I didn't want to make it big. I just wanted something small. And I just um, had fun with it. And <laughs> believe it or not, this little bitty quilt, I actually quilted on my long arm machine. <laughs> Diane says, too tiny. <laughs> I think somebody had given me a bag of scraps. I'm a, I'm a person that I love memory things. And so sometimes I will get stuff from people and normally I wouldn't keep it if it was mine. If, Like I said, I like to square up to a minimum of one and a half, but I had to square those up to one and a quarter. But I wanted to do like a little memory quilt of the person that actually gave it to me. So that's why I did that. And then the rest of the bag, I just tossed it all out because they were smaller than what I used. So I see I got comments about using the... Long arm to quilt. I use my long arm to quilt everything. I don't care what size it is. I don't I do not quilt on my home machines anymore. So on this one here, I had a few half square triangles that was part of a border. And so I just made them into pinwheels. This is actually a challenge quilt too. I didn't show you this one last week it was on my wall i was just too lazy to take it down my house looks bare because i tend to take stuff off the walls when i have lectures so i haven't put everything back up so i hate pulling things down this one 
and the one that I just showed you, I pulled off today because of the half square triangles. And then over here is some flying geese units that I had made from something else. And so it's like, if they're already there, that told me what color my background was going to be for this challenge. And I think this challenge was to make a quilt based on a photo. And I was in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, and they had a horse statue downtown standing on the street and so that's where I pulled this horse from so that's what I did my challenge on it actually it won second place it's on the back I couldn't remember but it was in 2007 so I was just doing something here just to participate in the challenge but it was a lot of fun fix his little tail <laughs> And then I think one other one, you all know I have my stuff down on the floor. <laughs> so I like the horse's tail. And that was just some sort of yarn that I had and just tacked it on. And then I think I may have shown you all this quilt before where this was also left over from doing flip corners on another quilt top. And then I just saved the little pieces and made them into pinwheel blocks. Actually set this quilt on point. That means that it was pieced diagonally instead of across. That's what that means when it says set on point for my beginners. And then what I did is I also quilted this. I'm trying to get it up here using my embroidery machine. I did not even do that on a regular sewing machine. I didn't have my long arm at the time. And I just used my embroidery machine to stitch these little beautiful hearts. And I even got one in the center. And they're perfect. But I didn't do it. <laughs> but I love this little quilt top. And then one other one. I did a whole video series on Pat Sloan Solstice quilt. And for every block that she gave us, I actually use whatever I had in my stash. Leftover blocks. If I had half square triangles, I made something. If I had flying geese, I made something. And so these, I had a whole lot of floral half square triangles left over from another project I was working on. And it actually goes through the back as well. But if you're interested in seeing this quilt, the whole process of it, check out my solstice quilt. It's a whole series of it. It should be a playlist for it. And just, I like when I already have half of my work done. If I can get the stuff sold, that's half the problem of the cutting and the sewing. So since I didn't have to cut because it was already cut from something else, I did the sewing as I was working on other projects. So I haven't spent any time on the project yet. I don't mind squaring up and pressing things open that I can use right away. And then I told you about how I was using the ones where I was sewing them to muslin. And I'm actually working on this project. And it's called Mountain Top. There is a pattern for this. In the pattern, they use a different size half square triangle. And I'm just using my little one and a half inch that will square up to one inch finish. And so I did have to add uh, border pieces around here. And then of course I got my sashing and my setting square. And I thought I had some other pieces to show you, but I have them put up. I actually have a few of these done, maybe about 20 or so. And I started putting some of them together, but I don't have it in this bag. This is my working bag. And I just keep one block in here so I'll know what I'm doing when I go back to work on it because I make a whole lot of half square triangles and then I might go back and make five or six blocks. All right. Next thing. You can also take your half square triangles and add solid squares with them as well and come out with designs. And let me get some solid squares. Uh, you can also use them as borders this way that I'm about to show you and I'm just trying to lay them down 
flat so I can see them so I won't make a mess in front of the camera. <laughs> and I've got half pins and things because I'm actually using some of these uh, in a project. I was so happy to see this because I'm working on this one on my wall that I need a lot of half square triangles and I need a lot of uh, quarter square triangles as well. So I was so happy to see these half square triangles come in. Okay, so you can also use them to make various different borders. And so you can kind of see where your pieces are going up and down. If you want, you can also put darks in here that will give you a different look as well. So there is so many things that you can do with the half square triangles that I just can't understand why a lot of people are not using them or giving them away. And a lot of people do give them to me and I use them, but I just can't understand when you, uh, when you got a free quilt sitting right in front of you. I appreciate it when they give it to me. I'm real happy, but I still just don't understand especially when they're all done. And these half square triangles that I got are three inches right now. They'll finish at two and a half, but I'm not even using them as that. I'm using them because I need two inch finished pieces and I'm using them to make quarter square triangles like this, but it's a three piece instead of a four piece unit. And then sometimes I have it where the small piece here is dark, and then other times this piece is light, and then they are dark in the other two fabric placements. So that's what I'm actually doing with them right now. So, because since I got these as a gift, I'm always making something to remember the person that I got the pieces from. So I did piece something. Now, when this person, their half square triangles on the back, they have pressed their triangles to the dark. Now, when I'm working on it with this quilt up here, I am repressing those seams open. For this project, I decided I was not going to repress the seams. So on the back, you can see where I did not repress those seams. The reason why I don't like, uh, when I'm having a whole lot of half square triangles come together and then you have intersections like, here, where you have all four of the triangles coming in the middle, and you've pieced this in rows, so there is no way that you can do that little spin the seam trick. I just prefer to press my seams open because you will feel the difference when you run your hand over seams where they've been pressed open as compared to running your hand over a seam where your rows have been pressed like your, your units are pressed to the dark and then your rows are pressed to one side. In order to eliminate the bulk of those seams being pressed to the dark, I opted to press all of my row pieces open. And it made a big difference in keeping it nice and flat. And this is what I actually made from her pieces, just so I can say, I got the fan blowing it. Um, there we go. So this is what I actually made. This was given to me. You know, I just can't fathom why you wouldn't want this. And I could have made like two or three of these and put them into a quilt top and made a quilt top. And if when I finish with this project, if I have any left over, I will make some more of these. I would like to have like three of these to do a quilt with. But at least I have the one if I don't get a chance to do the other. So I just want to go back through the chat box here. Do you have extra quilting laying around? Extra quilts laying around. <laughs> You're so creative. The thing with me, I always have what you would consider extra quilts laying around. I have probably in storage, I probably have about maybe 300, maybe 400 quilts. I'm not sure. I use my quilts seasonally, so I decorate seasonally with them. And then the main reason why I have so many quilts is because I have so many different lectures. And so when I go to places, I have to take quilts that are on that subject. And I have about seven or eight lectures. So I try to take 30 to 40 quilts as a minimum to each lecture. 
So yeah, I have a lot in my house and I do store them so that I can retrieve them pretty easily. But I mean, it is storage. So if I'm going in there to get one quilt, it's a, it's a pain. But if I can, um, if I'm going for a lecture, most of those quilts are going to be grouped together. There are times when a quilt would cross one lecture to another. And so I have to decide if I'm going to take it when I go to that particular place. Another thing that I do when I do lectures is that I keep track of what quilts I show. So if I come to your gill this year and I do a scrap quilts lecture, there's about 20 quilts in my scrap quilt lectures that are staples. And then I have another 20 or so quilts that I can switch out and give you different things to look at. So yeah, I do keep track of what I show because I do have gills that they get newer members in and they want me to do the same lecture over instead of choosing another one. So I try to keep track so I don't always bring the same quilts. Again, we're talking about mixing them with half square triangles. I have a pattern on my website called the Exploding Star. I'm going to show you two of the four quilts that is included in that pattern. If you're interested in it, you can go to tquilts.com, look under products. But this uh, pattern, this is the third one. I saw this quilt in an antique shop many years ago and have been teaching it. So, yeah, and I have a different way of showing you how to put this together that makes your life a little easier. But this is just some of it. Again, these were made with all leftover half square triangles. I didn't piece any of these. And when you first look at this, you think it's more of a white to off-white background. But I've got all kinds of fabric pieces in here. All different colors are in my lights. It's not just white. So you have to really uh, pay attention to value when you work on something like this. <laughs> Mary say, wow, that looks advanced. And this pattern is written so that you can make any size squares that you like as well. And then in that same pattern, this is the last piece I'm going to show you today, and then we can just do some chatting, is this is also in the exploding star. It's just a smaller piece. I love two-tone quilts, but I don't like two-color quilts. So I really like doing patterns where I can use a lot of a particular color and then not necessarily just two different fabrics. So we got a Sharper63 is here saying hi, hello, welcome to the chat. And Sharon says she's back, she got rebooted. Said, uh, Pat says she loves the purples and lavender. I di also did that quilt very similar. Well, the larger size, I did it in red and yellow. That was really pretty, too. And Kaylin says all of those quilts were wonderful. Thank you so much, Kaylin. Love the purples and lavender. I think I read that one. And Sharon, <laughs> Sharon got rebooted, so they must be having some issues with some of your connections or YouTube is having issues where some of you are. So again, if you find that you are not using half square triangles, there are so many different things you can do with them. Just think of the log cabin quilts that you can make. You could do the same thing just by substituting your dark and lights in your half square triangles and do any of those log cabin settings with your half square triangles. And Lisa is asking, what different lectures do I give? Off the top of my head, I might miss some. I do have that listed on my tquilts.com website. But I'll just tell you what I can remember. I know I have scrap quilts lecture. I have a lecture that's called Things That Disappear. It starts out with the disappearing nine patch, but I show you how to make a lot of other things disappear. Um... Sampler quilts, stack and whack quilts, 
uh, it's not just Christmas in July, which is a lecture that's showing patriotic and Christmas quilts. Um, again, I know I'm missing some because I just can't remember, but they are all listed on my website. So let me go over here and read some of these comments. If I think of some other ones, I'll put them out there. But right now I'm just blocking. I know I have a strings and mosaics. <laughs> and that's talking about uh, crumb quilts and string quilts. And I go through demonstration on how to make those particular blocks as well. I've done a video on some and just know that in my videos, I don't give you everything because I have to save some surprises for when I go and visit Quilt Gills. And we got Ethel saying, what is the best size half square triangles to have on hand? And I'm probably the wrong person to ask that of because I, I keep everything that I can make one inch finished. And I don't, I'm one of those people that if a pattern tells me I need 200 half square triangles that finish at two inches and I have 200 of them that finish at one and a half, I'll remodify that entire pattern because the half square triangles it's one of the most difficult things to make in a pattern or more time consuming, not necessarily difficult, but more time consuming. So I'm going to make my squares and rectangles fit to my half square triangles, if you know what I mean. So I'm probably the wrong person to ask that of. So if you all have suggestions for her, go ahead and leave them in the comment box, in the chat box. But I keep everything that I can make an inch and a half or larger as far as squaring it up at the time it's going to finish at one inch i've made bed size quilts where i have made borders with one inch finish pieces and i just did not pull those out um like i said maybe one day this summer the heat hits my deck in the back now that i think about it i was wanting to do uh like a deck trunk show and maybe i'll do some of my sampler quilts for you but um i have one quilt that i did all pieces of it was it was beautiful but it was pieces and i did it because i already had them sewn so um i'm still reading comments says a woman in my quilting club did a quilt of val valor border with one half white and one half patriotic fabric it was cool inner border. And I'm sure it was very pretty. I, I see a lot of just gorgeous quilts of valors. A lot of great patterns have been made for them too. Just awesome. Cindy says, my husband once asked me, now that all family members have a quilt and all of our beds are covered, will you stop making quilts? <laughs> no way. We always need more quilts. I don't know what I would do with myself if I wasn't making a quilt or doing quilting at all. So, yeah, it's not about the number. And I got so many people that would love to have a quilt. I don't think that they fully appreciate and understand what they're asking of me, but they would love to have quilts. So there is no way that I would ever have an issue with having too many quilts. A matter of fact, I get insulted often by people telling me when I have extra quilts to give them one, you know. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon says she loves working with half square triangles. T, what's your favorite accu quilt size of triangle? And like right now, it would have been nice to have an accu quilt die that cuts um three inch finished half not not three inch finish because i think i have that but like two and a half inch finished half square triangles because that's kind of what i'm working with so when i got this bag i was just thanking god for that great gift because i needed them to be three inches so i could cut them and then when i put two other fabrics with it that they would make two and a half inch when i square them up to two inch finish so I was so sick and tired of making these half square triangles. So now I've got a lot of half square triangles made. I'm just repressing them for my project. So I would say probably two inch finish, which is your two and a half inch unfinished, would be the most popular size 
Uh, if you are a Bonnie Hunter fan, you might want to try for two inch unfinished, one and a half inch unfinished because she does a lot with that and she does a lot with the three inch finish. So it just depends. And Sharon is saying two inch finish, Ethel two inch finish. Um, Bonnie uses three and one half inch, one and a half inch. And June Hansen says, gee, I'm sorry I'm late, but didn't want to miss you. We're almost finished, June, but you can watch it when it uploads. Got, uh, Lisa says, since you're talking about AccuQuilt, what are your favorite dyes in general? Uh, I'll just tell you my AccuQuilt story because when I first got it, I wasn't using it. And that was because I went about it initially all wrong. So when I first got, I bought the Go system when I first started. And I bought the two and a half inch die. And then it came with the... A uh, die that cuts four and a half inch square, two and a half inch square, and then it gave you the pieces for two and a half inch half square triangles because those are the basics for making a 12 inch finished block for the most part. It's very standard piecing that you will find in a 12 inch block. So that's what I have. And I was bought it with the intent of. I can make my own jelly roll strips, of course, but I was also buying it because it would be faster to cut my binding strips. Well, when I got it, you know, it, the AccuQuilt Go at the time, you know, it folds up and then you can take it and put it on the floor. And then when you need to use it, you have to pull it out and open it up. You got to make space for that because, of course, you didn't have a dedicated spot for it. So you're probably not going to use it. So every time I needed to make binding, even if I was doing it for a queen size quilt, I would say I can cut these things faster than pulling that thing out, getting the trays, I mean, getting the dies, getting the um, protective cover, the mat for it. So I would just go ahead and cut. So I wasn't really using it. And so what I found was if I went and bought dies that are not easy to cut to start, then I probably would use it. So I went and bought like Rob Peter to pay Paul. I bought a lot of the, uh, not the dress, then the drunkard's path, which has that curve in it, which are difficult to cut with templates. So I started buying things that were more difficult to cut. The apple cork uh, quilt top that I'm working on, I got the top just about done. I decided I want to put a border on it. But I, you know, I started buying things that I wanted to cut that were difficult to cut, not straight line cuts. And so then I found that I was using it more because I was using it for stuff that was more difficult to cut. At that point, I then decided that I like the studio system better and that if I'm going to have a dedicated spot for it, I may as well use the entire space and buy the studio system. So I bought it. The reason why I bought the studio is because at the time, you got to remember this is at the time, the AccuQuilt system was harder to turn over the handle that is on the actual studio. Now they've got the AccuQuilt Go system where it's electronic and you just slide the things in and out. But I do like when I buy my studio dies because the difference in cutting, if I have a Go die, I can only cut six pieces. If I have a studio die, I can cut 10 pieces at a time. And believe me, when I'm cutting a lot of half square triangles and squares, I am actually layering on 10 layers of fabric to cut. So that's the benefit for me for the system. And I'm just trying to make sure I see things coming up in the comments. Does anyone use Sizzix dies? Eric, um, I do, like, my studio system can use Go dies. It can use the Sizzix dies. 
It does have to have an adapter to use the gold dies as well as a different adapter to use the Sizzix dies. So my system, I do have some Sizzix dies in my stash as well. Now there are the, I know Eric, you also do paper crafting. So if you're talking about the little thin lit dies, then that's different. They, they do not run in the Go or the studio system. I do have a big shot for my paper crafting for the little thin dies. Cheryl Land is here. She says, hello. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome. We're just about finished. You got any questions? Pop them into the box because we're almost done. June says, I had a company for, I had company for supper tonight and I used three and a half of the large die would use and I use the three and a half or the large die would use the large from the AccuQuest. I am confused by your topic and I know your comment, I mean your comment, I know your comment has been changed by your system. You know, we got these technologies that think they're smarter than us and then they make us look stupid. <laughs> by, you know, they change our text and I'm like, oh my God, that is not what I meant to say. So I can't understand that to answer you right now, June. Bonita says, I use Sizzic dies, love them, not as expensive as AccuQuilt dies. And I have to agree, when I first got, when I actually got my system, I have not bought a lot from AccuQuilt in a while. When I first got my system, I actually got my machine at a very reasonable price. It was right before Christmas one year, like maybe you between Black Friday and maybe a week of Christmas, they ran those machines at half off. So that's how I actually got my studio machine. They also used to run specials where if you buy gift certificates, say you buy $100 in gift certificates, they'll give you $25 for free. So then I would buy that, but I would gift it to myself. And then when they had a sale, say right after Christmas, they would have their dyes 50% off. Then I would go use my gift certificate to purchase my dyes. I just noticed that there are not as many specials as it used to be. And so I have not done a lot. The other thing is they've been doing a lot with the Go Cube systems that they are creating. I have a lot of those dies individually already, so I'm not interested in repurchasing dies because you have now grouped them into cubes, which is how they should have come out in the first place. And I'm just not interested in rebuying that so that I can have everything nice and compact like that. My other thing is, I think with the studio system, they haven't come out with a lot of new dies on the studio side. So I'm a little bit frustrated with that. And every time they send a survey, I will take the survey and let them know that. And so now I no longer take the surveys because I've taken about 10 of their surveys and not one of my suggestions has been implemented. So I'm like, why are you still sending me these surveys? I'm not apparently saying what they want me to say. So... They're just ignoring any of my comments. So I figure I'm just wasting my time if it's been two years and you haven't implemented not one of my ideas. So I've even given them die suggestions and everything. But yeah, I do still like them though. <laughs> I like my system and I will use it. I'm just waiting for them to be competitive in price. And I'm just refusing to buy anything that I feel like it's overpriced at the point, at this point. So And Eric is saying it's good to know that he could use the Sizzix dies in AccuQuilt. They're on the Sizzix site, they have a black die adapter. It's like either dark or dark brown or black. I can't remember what the color is. You buy it from Sizzix, and then I use it on my studio cutter. I don't know if I can use it on the go because I never did try that. So this is on the studio. Um, Cheryl says, wave, hee <laughs> hee, at least I caught the last few minutes here. <laughs> okay, and, um, Diane says she has the electric and she loves it. And like I said, I don't know if, 
I don't, Eric, what system do you have? Do you have the AccuQuilt Go or the AccuQuilt Studio? And then it says AccuQuilt has a large die that I can cut, larger one half square triangles. They have them in a, he has the Go. So, Eric, if you got that Go, I'm thinking you're not going to be able to use studio Sizzix dies in your go. I think that there are different in height and I don't know if there is an adapter for the go. There is an adapter for the studio. So just be careful with that. And you know, I haven't checked in a long time, so maybe they have done some changes. And I see that you've got to go. So see you later, Eric. <laughs> um, yeah, June, your question they do have a lot of the larger half square triangle dies and I actually have the six and a half and I actually, I think I have an eight and a half because it came with an, on another die or something, but I do use those as well. Those make very nice charity quilts. Matter of fact, I just finished two charity quilts. They were, I done, I pieced them back last year, but I never finished them because life happened. But I actually use large half square triangles on some panels. And I'll show a video of that being finished. Diane says she loves the strip dies and the 5 and 10 inch squares. The funny thing is I have the 5 inch square die and I hardly ever use it. I, I don't know why. And I think part of the reason might be because sometimes when we have patterns that use 5 inch squares, they'll have us change them and ch cut them down to two and a half by four and a half and so i'm like if i'm gonna cut them into two and a half by four and a half i didn't need to start with charm squares i could have just started with my two and a half inch strip so i get a i'm one of those people that i'm always trying to use my scraps first so then i'll go to my scrap two and a half inch strip pieces and use those first instead of using the charm squares there are, and that's even in the book called nickel quilts and then they have another book called More Nickel Quilts. And then I went to her website last week sometime. Inside of she just got all kinds of books out there. But a lot of the patterns have you cut the pieces down to two and a half by four and a half. So I'll just go ahead and start cutting those pieces from my strip sets instead of wasting my charm squares. So it's very seldom that I use the actual squares. And... Eric says, laughing out loud, not going, just saying I have the AccuQuilt Go system, not the studio. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> if you haven't guessed by now, I have a very good sense of humor. <laughs> and I even laugh at myself. No, you cannot use the Sizzix Bigs dies with the systems. And that's what I um, know for a fact back then. But I wasn't sure if they've changed anything because, like I said, I haven't um, been purchasing anything. But I do like to go to uh, Sizzix sites and buy their Bigs dies because I can use them in my studio. I do like... AccuQuilts better a little bit because they have more multiples, but I noticed that Scissors is getting into putting more multiples on a die, like on my Tumblr die. I remember when AccuQuilt first came out with it, we only had one Tumblr on the die. So you were cutting six layers and you had to constantly keep turning. When I got the studio system, they had a die, yay long, that had six Tumblrs on there and i could cut 10 layers at a time so i'm cutting 60 tumblers at one time and that's why i like the studio system better because their dies are longer and i know Sizzix is starting to include more multiples but i like dies where i can get multiples of the same cut at one time because i can use larger scraps and get them cut in a jiffy jiffy <laughs> I'm still laughing at Eric. <laughs> or at me. <laughs> but yeah. So I think I'm through the comment section. 
I hope you all enjoyed the half square triangle uh, lecture. I hope even though this was more for beginners, I hope that the advanced people at least learned a different way of squaring up the half square triangles using a different ruler. It just depends on the technique as to what type of half square triangle unit you need. If I'm just squaring up one or two half square triangles, then I probably use a traditional square ruler. But if I'm going to be cutting a lot, I'm going to use the method that is least tedious for me. And that's all on your own personal use. So it's not any one particular ruler that is better than the other. It's just depending on what I'm doing at the time. Diane is saying that the studio even has dyes AccuQuilt can't get. Um, I don't know if you all have ever heard of a company called AccuCut, C-U-T. It's also, it's the main company of AccuQuilt. It actually came out before. they. It's actually AccuQuilt and AccuCut is the same company. What AccuCut was, when they first came out, they were not catering to quilters. They were catering to educators, like teachers, that were making things to put up on bulletin boards. And so they were having all of this stuff die cut. Well, you know, as quilters, we see something being cut and you're saying it can cut fabric too. Well, we want to have it too. So then we buy it and, we, and you tell us it's a two-inch finished square. And then we get it. We need that square to be two and a half inch finished. And so they start working. Instead of using the AccuCut company to make the quilting dies, they then branched the company off and made AccuQuilt. And that's where all of those dies are used for um, quilting. And then on the AccuCut side, they have all of the stuff that you can use for paper crafting, which I also buy some of their dies as well. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a lecture on AccuQuilt. A lot of people don't know that they came from, uh, they're under the same branch as AccuCut. Um, Cindy says, love your show and tell tonight. Thanks. You're welcome, Cindy. Thank you for watching. Mary says, rank beginner here. Thanks for the info. You are more than welcome. I get asked a lot of these questions. And Joyce says, howdy. Hi, Joyce. We're just about wrapping up here. <laughs> so don't forget to thumbs up the video, people. Um, I will see if I can find some of the videos from some of the things that I referenced here. I like to go ahead and try to put them up at the little eye at the top. So I'll try to do that. But it's going to take me a little while to find them. I, I'll add the solstice link the little link where I made the little miniature little half square triangle quilt or where I was quilting it anyway. I'm not sure how much I showed. And anything else that related to this video, I will put there. So I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And I will see you all next week. If you have a suggestion for a topic, go ahead and leave it in the um chat box i guess but you can also leave it in the description i'll see it better if you wait till it upload and leave it there or go to my previous video and just leave a comment in the description field so i'm always looking for suggestions for topics for live and they have to be something that i can do easily live because i don't have a lot of space here where i'm working so i'll see you all next week bye bye <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>